Okay, hello there. My name is Garudo Suluan. I'm head of the Department of Technology Enhanced Learning here in the Cork Institute of Technology. Uh, this is the first of a series of videos and screencasts that we in the department are making available. Um, they're all about um, online distance education here in CIT. Um, this one is really intended primarily for those who are about to begin teaching online in CIT for the first time, but um, it's also uh, for those uh, thinking about teaching online or um, wondering how it all works. So there's two main parts. Uh, the uh, first is um, just a, a short um, bit of information about who we are. Uh, I guess the idea here is to uh, help people understand the kinds of supports that we can provide and the kind of um, the kind of skills we have, the kind of work we undertake and uh, how these might benefit you. Um, also, I suppose it's to um, give some context uh, for the kinds of uh, services that we uh, that we offer. So we all in the department as individuals have a background uh, developing e-learning solutions for the uh, commercial world. And uh, I guess we're now taking those um, skills and uh, offering them internally. Um, so offering them, offering them um, to uh, to CIT staff and to and to adjunct faculty. Indeed, uh, we also though undertake uh, exploratory research. So there's always a next big thing in the uh, whole area of technology enhanced learning. And uh, so we have a range of uh, typically European funded or nationally funded. Um, uh, projects and initiatives looking at all kinds of things like augmented reality or virtual reality or open education resources or learning analytics and, and so forth. Um, so the services that we provide uh, typically are looking at here and now type technologies. Uh, the exploratory research um, typically, not always, but typically would be looking at things that have a three to five year um, adoption horizon. Um, there is a bit of a virtuous uh, circle going on here, though, because the services, I guess, give us, um, you know, kind of end user uh, insight and bring a certain realism to the exploratory research that we do. And the exploratory research, in turn, um, uh, future proofs things um, and ensures the currency of the uh, provision. So hopefully that's kind of some useful context on some of these more uh, text dense uh, slides that uh, that I'm offering here about uh, all the various different things that we do. So um, suffice to say for this uh, particular slide that um, we do a whole lot of, uh, as the previous graphics suggested, we do a whole lot of um, different uh, things in terms of um, research and piloting and working, continuing to work with commercial and industry partners and working with various different research and academic partners. But um, key point for this presentation is the fact that we have um, responsibility for developing and supporting the Institute's range of online distance programs. In that context, there's a whole lot of um, different uh, supports and services that we offer. We provide training and resources. We help uh, investigate and pilot new new technologies and tools and apps for, for online teaching. Um, we um, help develop and improve different uh, aspects of the uh, online learning process. That could be anything from instructional design and content development right through to things like assessment or better student communication, better student uh, management, etc. Um, we um, are also the people who can who provide uh, resources and deliver deliver introductory or uh, induction sessions for for new online students. So if you have students and you'd like us to do an induction session with them, please let us know. Uh, we also find ourselves marketing and promoting a lot of the online uh, programs, uh, particularly because they play in an international market, and sometimes there can be a bit of a cold start problem in terms of promoting those kind of offerings. Um, internally, we help with a number of different aspects of um, the whole process of getting new programs validated. 
And uh, finally, uh, we facilitate the running of this online teaching community of practice, uh, which some of you um, may be part of. This is a group that uh, meets uh, on campus um, about every two weeks. Um, and like a true community of practice, um, it is people, um, I guess, devoted to improving their practice in that, that whole space where teaching meets technology. So um, it's an opportunity to interact with, um, with peers and uh, talk about frustrations, um, concerns, workarounds, uh, new ways of doing things, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, we are also the department who host information, um, put, put together web content about the individual programs uh, and host those on our website. Um, right now, though this might change, this is what a typical page looks like for the uh, Masters in uh, e-learning design and development, one of a number of uh, online programs that we have. And you can see um, there's some kind of key information there to do with, uh, you know, the code and uh, the fees, the duration, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also on those web pages, you will find uh, information like this, nice testimonials from, uh, from past students. And uh, a lot of the uh, individual program pages would also include uh, videos and animations uh, promoting those programs. Uh, and you can see some nice um, numbers of views there on YouTube for uh, some of the programs like the one on um, the MA in Journalism with New Media and the MSc in Digital Marketing Strategy. Okay, so that, that hopefully gives you a good sense of who we are, but let me move on now to talk about our model of uh, online learning and what the key components there are. Um, so this graphic here is kind of a generalized view of, of, of how it works. So what that means is that you might not have all these components that I'm about to describe or some of the components, depending on what program you teach, might differ a little bit, but the general principles and the overall approach will, will still be very similar. Um, so just to talk about each of these in turn, um, you have uh, live lectures, which are um, delivered using, uh, for now at least, a product called Adobe Connect. So I've written live lectures here, but it's really live classes, I suppose, because there, there might be more than lectures going on. You might be doing a, a software demo or some um, kind of equivalent of a laboratory session or something like that. Um, those live sessions get recorded and those recordings get hosted on Blackboard, which is our um, learning management system of choice here in CIT. Um, so uh, it, it hosts those recordings, it hosts any associated learning materials, and also I suppose the other primary use that it would be put to would be to uh, support certain kinds of student assessment. Uh, for some, but not all courses, there would also be virtual desktops provided. So these are virtual machines that students would have access to uh, via their own machines, but these virtual machines uh, might be more highly specced or certainly would have all of their software re requirements um, um, taken care of, if you like. And that's all based on CIT's own uh, private cloud infrastructure. Um, for some courses in the com computer science area, it might actually be more than virtual desktops, might be virtual labs. Um, in addition, um, all students uh, have access to uh, CIT's uh, eBooks and online uh, journals. Um, uh, and those can be integrated into our model as well, although typically, I suppose, that would probably be done through the, uh, through the Blackboard system. Um, there are also, uh, there is also, rather, uh, an online student community. Uh, the students get their email through uh, Gmail, uh, so it's a short step from there to start using other um, things in the Google infrastructure and uh, our ecosystem. And one of the um, big ones that we use is the Google Plus community. Uh, we tell students it's like replacement therapy for the college bar or the college cafeteria, depending on your preference. But nonetheless, this place where they can uh, congregate um, to uh, discuss their courses um, and, uh, I guess, have opportunities for, for peer learning um, 
but I'll, I'll talk some more about that in a while. Uh, and a slightly, just slightly more complicated version of the um, of the graphic, just fitting in the f well. First of all, the the recorded sessions, that that connection there between the, the the live classes and the learning management system, but also fitting in the fact that we have these e-learning studios, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, from uh, which um, on campus lectures can uh, do their online teaching or online delivery. Um, I've just squeezed in the, the private cloud there as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to start actually with that, uh, the e-learning studios there. So it's just to say that we have six uh, so-called e-learning uh, studios or e-learning booths uh, available uh, to on-campus lectures and each one of these uh, studios or rooms is provided with uh, an optimized workstation, uh, two large monitors, HD webcam, um, condenser mic, and uh, an optional uh, graphics tablet, which uh, some lecturers find use um, find of use. Um, it's got an integrated um, LCD and, and pressure sensitive control, so you can do, you know, precise live uh, annotations and drawing over lecture or presentation materials or, or even shared uh, screen content. So some people find that useful and it's kind of in the diagram there on the bottom right. Um, but back to the model again, let me tell you a bit about um, Adobe Connect. Obviously we will have uh, more videos about how to use Adobe Connect. I just want to explain its, uh, its role in the overall models I'm describing in here. So uh, for those of you not uh, familiar, um, Adobe Connect is a live e-learning or web conferencing tool. It's you know, quite similar to other things you may have used like WebEx or Citrix or GoToMeeting or iLink or one of these kinds of things. So there's a number of things it allows like web conferencing, the ability to share files, the ability to share wh whatever's on your desktop if you want to do like a software demo or something like that. You can do breakout sessions with the students where they go into uh, different rooms perhaps to discuss things and what have you. There is text-based chat. There is um, polling of students. Maybe you want to poll them and see who has maybe prior learning in a particular area, who has experience in a particular area, or what their preference is perhaps in terms of um, what you're going to cover on a particular day, something like that. As I mentioned before, the sessions themselves, these live sessions that you would do through Adobe Connect, uh, they can be recorded or archived. Uh, there's a mobile app player that works okay at a push. Um, the um, one, one critical thing to get, I suppose, is that the approach that we've taken here in CIT is that each module has its own, what Adobe Connect would call, its own meeting room. And each of these meeting rooms has its own custom um, web address. Uh, so you can see that actually in the kind of screenshot on the right there where there's a module called Narrative and Games being delivered at uh, 3 o'clock on a Monday, and this is the URL, the web address that students uh, type in or more likely click on to get there. Um, so you can go directly into each room uh, if you have the, the right credentials, obviously, and it's also possible in Adobe Connect, obviously, to kind of go in at root level and, and find the room from there and indeed find your recordings from there. So I hope that's kind of clear. What, what also might add a bit of clarity there is this screenshot that just um, shows you the interface, I guess. So that's me again. Um, it's, this is only one of a number of different layouts, but this is a pretty standard one. So here you might have a um, uh, kind of webcam feed. Here you have a list of um, people who are, um, um, uh, who, who are sort of hosts on the meeting, who have special privileges in the, in the, in the system. Here's a list of uh, different people in attendance at this particular session. And here's the chat area, the text-based chat area, which is the most um, straightforward way uh, for students to, uh, to communicate with you, I guess. And here is the kind of content area where most of the action uh, would happen, at least in this layout and in this example here. Actually, it's a screenshot of a recording rather than a, than a live session. So it's missing certain aspects of the, of the interface there, but um, recording or not, with this particular layout, that central bit there is 
typically where most of the action happens, where PowerPoint slides or PDF or some other kind of learning content um, would tend to um, get shared. Uh, okay, so back to the model. So I've, I've kind of told you a bit about Adobe Connect now. Let me uh, let me move on and uh, tell you a bit about uh, Blackboard. So Blackboard is a learning management system. So similar to other um, systems like it you may have come across, like, I don't know, Moodle, for example, or Canvas, or um, Brightspace. Um, per perhaps there's other learning management systems like that that you've come across, but uh, all of them do pretty much the same thing, which is to say that they provide a way for you to host some content, they provide a range of different communication and collaboration tools, they provide assessment tools, often in two different flavors, so you get auto-corrected tests, so auto-corrected uh, assessments, and also um, the kinds of assessments that are human-mediated, if you like, where students upload an essay or something like that, and you typically download it, correct it, and uh, maybe um, provide some feedback to them through the system again. Um, there's also a range of tools of uh, increasing sophistication that um, learning managements provide in terms of student management, student tracking, etc. Now, whereas Adobe Connect and tools like it are synchronous or live tools, uh, learning management systems are primarily, not exclusively, but primarily asynchronous or not live. Uh, the way we use it in uh, CIT is uh, primarily as a repository for the various different content. I've already mentioned this, but whatever it is you're sharing, you know, so paper, reports, uh, links, video, what have you. Um, uh, the big one, obviously, is providing links to the various different archived uh, Adobe Connect sessions so people can uh, look back on those live sessions if they missed them or, or just want to revise. Um, it's also used um, quite heavily um, to support the submission of, um, of, of, of student, um, student assessment work, be that, you know, essays or reports or, or projects or, 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 what have, or what have you. Um, there's also an associated um, plagiarism detection tool that's sometimes used as well to be sure that your students are not, let's say, overly um, inspired by something they found on the public web. Um, there's a range of different options uh, in Blackboard for asynchronous communication. Um, by and large, we, we don't tend to use them that much. Uh, your program may differ, but by and large, we tend to use um, the um, Google community, which, um, which I mentioned earlier for, for this purpose. Um, in addition to the, to the kind of standard asynchronous communication tools like discussion lists, you also have things like messaging and blogs and wiki tools, which are sometimes used for um, specific modules that might have a specific need. Um, this is, th so there are other uh, videos and screencasts available to you to tell you how to get to grips with using Blackboard, um, but I'm just showing you how we've kind of configured Blackboard or how we tend to use Blackboard. Um, so this is the, the type of homepage, I suppose, that we um, advise and it's a very very basic layout where um, basically week by week um, we create a folder and put different kinds of content into that folder so as you may know typically there's about 13 weeks of delivery in CIT's um, semesterized um, system and so from week 1 through to week 13 um, we tend to make available um, range of different content and those um, important um, Adobe Connect recording links. Um, so if I was to go into that particular folder where it says week one, this is what I might see. The link to the lecture, the slides perhaps, if you know, if, 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 if it is slides that you use as your learning material, and maybe some supplementary material that you thought might be of interest to the students or perhaps something that you mentioned um, during the um, during the presentation or during your during your class, um, there are some other tools that would be used. Um, this in this particular screenshot, there is actually the use of a forum, but as I say, we've kind of largely moved on from that. But something that would be used a lot would be, um, and it's just a different kind of content, really, I suppose. But it, the learning management system would be used as a way to share the brief 
um, for a particular assignment or assessment. And also, uh, we would tend to use what's known as the assignment feature there, uh, just below that where it says upload proposals. Uh, we would tend to use that as a kind of virtual pigeonhole, if you like, for the students to, uh, to, uh, to upload their essays or give you their essays, or, um, submit some kind of learning evidence to you. Um, some lectures would use the My Grades feature you can see there as well as a way to uh, share, well, grades and feedback to, uh, to students. Okay, so that's Adobe Connect and that's, uh, that's Blackboard covered as well. I'll say something quickly maybe about the virtual desktop, but not, not too much. So um, students on some online courses, not all courses, will have access to a virtual or virtualized um, desktop. Uh, and this virtual desktop uh, will give them access to uh, whatever software they need and also provide them with some kind of uh, remote, this has changed over the years, but provide them with access to some kind of remote storage um, solution, I guess. Um, so if you're not familiar with virtual desktops, you can kind of think of it as being like a separate computer that runs in a, in a window on the student's own uh, physical computer. That makes make, makes it any clearer. As I mentioned earlier, um, there would be more complex use of the cloud infrastructure on some of the computer science courses, uh, where there would not be just be virtual desktops, but but actual remote labs set up using that that uh, that infrastructure. And so, okay, so I've covered um, Adobe Connect, Blackboard, and the virtual desktop. I won't say anything really about the eBooks and uh, and library and. Perhaps, as I say, the graphic is misleading. They would mostly be shared through the through the Blackboard system anyway. Um, but I will, just to finish up, say one or two things about the Google community that we're using. So this is just a, a screenshot of what that looked like last year. And uh, as you can see, it's just a really kind of neat card-based layout. I've kind of um, obfuscated the, 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 um, the identity of the students there. That's, that's, that's not what it looks like. Um, but uh, you can see here that you have somebody like posing um, a particular um, question or something like that. And, and down below, there's, um, um, there, there are some replies that you can, you can have a look at. Um, it is also possible, desirable even, um, for people to kind of identify what module they're talking about. So again, the example I've chosen from here, just because I'm kind of more intimately involved with it is the Masters in E-Learning Design and Development. Uh, and those things you see on the left-hand frame there, who's who, or sorry, not who's who, but the other ones, E-Learning Authoring, E-Learning Instructional Design, E-Learning Research and Proposal, um, those are the names of uh, different modules on that program. And uh, when people choose to make a post, they can uh, link that post to a particular module. And then when the lectures come along, if they, if they want to see what people are, are chatting about, um, they can filter by, uh, by the name of the particular module. The who's who bit actually just relates to an icebreaker activity we often do uh, with the students. But again, there's a separate video about the Google community. I'm just really trying to give you a whistle stop tour over things, but uh, it has been working really well um, across um, almost all of the uh, online programs at this stage. Um, it's a nice alternative, I think, to a discussion list because it really favors kind of recency over anything else. So you don't get that kind of thing where stuff gets lost, let's say, in, in treads and subtreads in a discussion list. It really just gives you a view of what people are talking about right now and has worked extremely well as a space for peer learning. So it is rare that you would see a student asking a question and not get a response from another student, um, you know, not only within 24 hours, but maybe within within the hour of them uh, posing that that question. Um, okay, I think that's about about it for that. Um, so I think I've spoken about pretty much all of the components, except perhaps to say that I could push all of that stuff aside and say that obviously uh, email is still quite an important part of the model. We disencourage students from sending emails directly to the lecturers, telling them to post their questions or difficulties or concerns first on the on the community. But I suppose that does place a kind of an obligation upon us to 
be looking in on that community and making sure that there aren't any unanswered questions or issues kind of bubbling up. Um, but I suppose it's unavoidable that sometimes um, students may um, email you directly. Okay, other stuff. Um, I, I was going to do a slide or two on the variety of other tools and um, technologies that um, lecturers have been using in addition to those that we have kind of prescribed in the in the model. Um, but I think that there's probably enough in this video to take in for now, but suffice to say that um, because everything is online, there's a very uh, rich and varied range of uh, tools that you can choose from to support specific things that you want to do. So some lecturers make extensive use of Twitter as a kind of a back channel or the audience response um, system Kahoot or um, uh, use a thing called Trello for project managing their student uh, work. There's a YouTube plugin for Adobe Connect that some people make a lot of use of. You have use of things like um, Evernote, say, to support research or Wiki um, solutions to support um, collaborative writing. So um, sky's the limit, really, I guess. But um, that's it for me for now, I think. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope that was of, uh, of some use.